Okay, this is the last video uh, in this section, so if you made it this far, give yourself a pat on the back. You've suffered through logarithms. Um, I want to talk about something called a buffer, and I'm going to give you sort of a real-world example. A lot of biological systems, including blood, need a specific pH to work properly. In the previous video, I think I said the pH of human blood, I think it's somewhere around 7.3. Um, if it's not exactly that, it's, it's pretty close to that. And your blood needs to be this pH for you to stay alive. If it goes too low, if it goes you know, toward 7 or even lower, or it goes too high, um, your, the molecules in your blood will stop working and you will end up dead. So it's very important for the pH of your blood to stay right around 7.3. Like I said, if your blood stops working, you're going to end up dead. Your blood contains chemicals that are dissolved in it that make it difficult. They prevent those chemicals that are dissolved in your blood make, uh, make it difficult to change the pH of your blood very much. And so those chemicals are basically there to keep you alive uh, in case there are things that end up in your blood that try to change the pH of your blood away from 7.3. Those materials that are dissolved in your blood that make it hard to change the pH, they're called pH buffers, and that's what we're talking about here. So this is going to be uh, our definition of what a buffer is. Buffer is a solute, so that means something you dissolve in a liquid, that makes it hard, that makes it makes the liquid resist changes in pH when you add an acid or a base. So just to give you an example, suppose I have two test tubes, test tube A, test tube B, they both have a pH of 7. And then in test tube A, I add a tiny bit of acid. And if I add a tiny bit of acid, the pH is going to go down because the acid concentration is going to go up. Let's say that the pH of this liquid goes from 7 to 4. And let's say that I take the very same amount of acid, the very same amount as in test tube A, and I throw it into test tube B, and the pH of this stuff is going to go down too, but maybe it only goes down to 6.8 then the chances are that test tube B has a buffer dissolved in it. And what I mean by resist here is that the buffer doesn't stop the pH from changing. You can see the pH did go down. It went from 7 to 6.8. But it made it harder for the pH to go down because the same amount of acid made this liquid in test tube A go from 7 all the way down to 4. So what buffers do is they make it they make it more difficult to change the pH. And so there are chemicals, there are buffers dissolved in your blood that basically make it difficult to change the pH of your blood when you start dumping acid or base into your blood. And that ends up keeping you alive. So buffers are not just found in blood, they're found in a lot of things. Most other parts of living organisms also need buffers, like your cells need to, they can only stay alive if they stay within a certain pH range, so your cells are also buffered. We use buffers in the real world too. If you have a swimming pool and you're maintaining it properly, you are putting a buffer into your pool water because when it rains, the rain is slightly acidic and it will acidify your pool water, so you need things dissolved in your pool water to make it difficult to change the pH of your pool water as well. Now I just want, this is all that I want you to know about what a buffer is. There's, there's a whole bunch of math associated with buffers. We're not going to cover that and, and a lot more detail about buffers. I want you to know what this definition of a buffer is and I want you to know my example with test tube A and B here and this one going from pH 7 to pH 4, this one going from pH 7 to pH 6.8. Um, I want you to know definition of buffer and I also just want to sort of explain what's why your blood needs to be buffered, right? So you were born and the pH of your blood was somewhere around pH 7.3. So why can't your body just set it and forget it? Why, why does it actually need something dissolved in your blood that makes it hard to change the pH? You were born with pH 7.3 blood why do I need to dissolve anything in there? And the reason is a very practical one, and that is you are constantly dumping crap into your bloodstream because of what you breathe and what you drink and what you eat. So there, right, the food that you eat might have a tendency to 
acidify your blood and your blood needs to be prepared to try to avoid that and the only way that your blood can avoid that is by having buffers dissolved in it that make it hard for the stuff that you dump into your bloodstream to alter the pH so that's why we have that's why our blood is buffered so that is basically the end of this collection of videos on acids and bases there are other slides in this uh, deck of slides I'm going to briefly go over them and tell you why I don't care about them um, there are there's a whole bunch of math that you can do with acids and bases neutralizing each other we will actually cover this but we're going to cover it in a future lab so we're not going to cover it here so you can ignore this sample problem um, these are suggested problems from the book again these are odd numbered problems so you can look up the answers in the back there are some other things that we did not cover that are in your textbook there's something called KW which is the called the ionization constant of water this tends to freak students out and I mean it's not super complicated but I don't think it's particularly necessary here um, so we are not going to cover it so if you see it in your textbook you can ignore it as far as I'm concerned um, other teachers may care and so that's it. That's the end of acids and bases. I think the next chapter is going to be gases, um, so which is incredibly boring. But what are you going to do, right? All right, bye-bye. They got no show, so I'ma grab the mic, flip a strip, believe the stun. Buckshot's the one that gets the